Hello, how are you? Have you had a good week? It's good to see you back. Have you been getting ready for Mother's Day this weekend? Maybe you have. Maybe you have a card for your mummy or your granny or maybe another lady who helps to look after you. These ladies are so important and they look after us so well. So make sure you give them a big hug and say thank you this weekend. Down in the description box, in the underneath this video, there's a little craft that you can do and you can make this. It's a little book and you can write in who it's for and your name at the bottom and you can colour it in and it folds out into a little book. You can fill in all the bits about how much you love your mummy or your nanny or the different ladies who take care of you. You can put it all into that and give it to them as a special present. You just need to get somebody to print it out for you and then you can fill it in yourself. That's a really special little present. There's someone who loves us even more than our mum. Can you think who it is? That's right, it's Jesus. Jesus loves us even more than our mums. Isn't that amazing? In today's story, we're continuing to hear the stories about how Jesus is for everybody. How he wants all of us to be his special friends. There were a group of teachers from the temple in Jerusalem who used to listen to Jesus very often. One of them was called Simon. And one day Simon asked Jesus if he wanted to come to his house for dinner. Well, Jesus said yes. And some of Simon's teacher friends were also there. They all went to Simon's house. Now a lady who'd been in the crowd followed them. She was a woman who had done lots of things that she shouldn't have done. And Simon knew this. The woman kneeled at Jesus' feet and cried. The tears fell onto Jesus' feet and she wiped them with her hair. Now, let's talk about feet for a minute. Jesus lived in a really hot, dry country. And back in those days, lots and lots of people wore sandals or maybe didn't wear shoes at all. So their feet were really, really dusty and dirty from walking around in the dust all the time. Because remember, they didn't have any cars or bicycles or scooters or buses or lorries or aeroplanes, any of those things. They had to walk everywhere. So their feet were always dirty. When you went to someone's house, you might have been offered some water to wash your feet before you sat down to eat. Now, this woman didn't just wash Jesus' feet and dry them with her hair. She kissed Jesus' feet and then she took out some really expensive perfume, a bottle that would have cost her an awful lot of money. And she poured the very expensive perfume on Jesus' feet. And this was a sign that he was very special. Simon, the man whose house they were at, said to himself, if this man really is the son of God, he would know that this woman is not a good person. Jesus knew what Simon was thinking. And he said this, Simon, I have something to say to you. And he told Simon a story. A man lent money to two people. He lent one man 500 pounds. And he lent another man 50 pounds. Neither of the men were able to pay him back. So the man said, that's okay, you don't have to. Which one of the men 
loved him more after that. Simon said that it was the man who had borrowed the 500 pounds. He was right. The man who owed him more. Jesus turned to the woman and said to Simon, look at this woman kneeling here. When I arrived at your house, you didn't offer me water to wash my feet with, but she has washed the dust off my feet and dried them with her hair. Her sins, and there are lots of them, have been forgiven, so she has shown me much love. A person who has been forgiven a small amount shows only a small amount of love. Jesus looked at the woman and said, your sins have been forgiven. Go in peace. Jesus loves all of us so much. He really wants to be our friends. Maybe when you tell your mummy or your granny how much you love her to this weekend, you could think about telling Jesus the same thing. Our next story today is called Little Bear's Spring. I thought it would be a really good book for today because it started to get a little bit warmer and I don't know if you've noticed that there are lots of leaves starting to pop on the trees and flowers. Do you have flowers in your garden yet? Maybe one or two daffodils popping up to say hello? Well, let's read about Little Bear and his spring adventure. One day, when the snow still lay hard on the ground, a bear cub woke and he looked all around. There were no other creatures to see there at all. How vast the world seemed and the bear felt so small. Is anyone out there? The little bear cried. But no, the wind whispered. And no, the snow sighed. The bear said, there's only this little round stone. It looks rather lost and sad and alone. But when the bear picked up the stone from the slope, it felt warm like a promise and smooth like new hope. The bear said, dear stone, now at least I've got you. I'll keep you beside me whatever I do. Then he tucked it in tight to the fur on his back and went lippity loppity off down the track. The bear with his stone trudged for miles here and there till he spotted some birds in that wide empty air. Birds, he called out, will you please come and play? But the bird said, we're busy as springs on the way. Oh, the bear muttered, so what is this spring? Spring, said the birds, it's a magical thing. The sun shimmers out through the cold winter's gloom and the buds open up and burst forth into bloom. Oh, said the bear, I could help build a nest. But although the bear tried, his attempts weren't the best. So the bear lolloped off down the track all alone, saying, Oh well, at least I have you, dear stone. Onwards they tramped till they came to a place where a family of hares were all having a race. Hares, called the bear, will you please play with me? But the bear said, We're busy. Spring's near, can't you see? 
know, said the bear, but what is this spring? Spring, said the hares, is a beautiful thing. The air throbs and thrums with the hum of the bees and the sky comes alive in the warm wafting breeze. Oh, said the bear, I could learn how to leap. But although the bear tried, he just fell in a heap. So the bear lolloped off down the track all alone, saying, Oh, well, at least I have you, dear stone. Then they trudged once again as the sun sank down low till they came to some wolves slinking off through the snow. Wolves, said the bear, can I join you tonight? Oh yes, growled the wolves as the spring is in sight. Good, good, the bear stammered. Uh, but, but what is this spring? Spring, said the wolves, is a wonderful thing. For after long hungry months, we find nice things to eat. Now, come nearer, my dear. You look ever so sweet. Then the bear, feeling scared, quickly fled up a tree, phew, where he sighed to himself, oh, maybe spring's not for me. Spring should be happy, but I'm all alone. All that I have is my little round stone. But when the bear reached for the stone on his back, it slipped and it tumbled and the bear heard a crack. Uh oh, what's happened? Oh, stone, said the bear, you're no good anymore. And he kicked it away on the soft forest floor. He felt empty and lonely and lost as bleak as the sky and as cold as the frost. Then the bear lolloped off, but he shivered in fright, for where was the track in the black of the night? So cradled in starlight, he slumped down to sleep. Until the next morning, he heard a loud cheep. Look at all the flowers. Oh. oh, cried the bear. I thought stones were dead, but I got it all wrong. You're living, he said. Then the breeze softly breathed and the sun shone down bright. And all of a sudden the world felt so right. Friend said the bear, maybe you'll come and play. So that's what they did for the rest of the day. Then the bear with his friend snuggled tight on his back, went lippity loppity off down the track. And as they walked onward, his heart seemed to sing with the magical, wonderful joy of the spring. Isn't that a nice book? I hope you're able to go out this week and find lots of spring flowers and maybe some new leaves and all sorts of other lovely new life. I'll see you next week. Bye bye!